Hey, what's up, Internet? It's Chris Krug. I'm here at the Interface Digital Health Summit in Vancouver, and I've met this nice gentleman named Peter Michael. How's it going, sir? I'm doing great here. Yeah. Excellent, Thank excellent. Um, well, Michael is a fascinating dude. He is one part artist, one part uh, technical savant. He's built, um, tell us a little about your device, the Porcini Medico device. Yeah, it's based on hardcore neuro neurophysiological evidence from my brain research. Um, uh, I'm a neurologist of uh, Copenhagen, working at the University Hospital of Copenhagen, and um, I have um, decided that I would find out where the bass is going. Uh, when you listen to a, a bass, uh, everybody knows that it's not uh, coming through the ears, but coming through the whole body. Right. Right. And uh, I decided I wanted to find out uh, how the body was, would actually sense this space. And I found a system, uh, and we named our company after that, the Pacini system, after the Pacinian corpuscles that are vib sensitive to vibration. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, bass is a kind of vibration, and we've got the whole body full of them. And nobody asks why they're there, but um, uh, I think that the answer is that we used them 50,000 years ago when uh, we were running around at the savannah with heavy animals coming up from behind. We wouldn't hear the animals. You feel the vibrations. We, we feel the animal. We feel the danger coming. Interesting. And, and this sensitive microphone in our in our organs were actually uh, there to warn us against dangers coming up so we could be alert and run for our lives. And we have uh, forgotten all about that in our modern world. Well, hey, I know you're a scientist. Until, until uh, people were, were beginning to play rock and roll music. And so this nice sense of the bass, uh, we, lo we love that most of us. Well, it's always I do, easy I do to myself, interpret yeah. the world through our own lens, but maybe it wasn't rock and roll music. So you think it maybe evolved as a survival instinct. But one of the things that I am interested in is if you look at meditation culture, throughout history or like um, different devotees monks you'll hear them doing this like deeply resonant like bass frequency chanting uh, people talk about you know good vibes or being on a good vibration or something and so do you think it's just purely running from the lions or is there a spiritual or non-physical component somehow potentially to these vibrations yeah but, but now we are moving into the discussion of music because that's um, that's another story uh, and part of it is the same, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, people have been using music also for 50,000 years. And, and everybody's using music to alter the moods and, and, and even health. And the music has this very powerful uh, uh, way of getting your mental processes uh, focused mm -hmm. and being in a rhythm to be able to calm you down. And it's also part of the savannah life when you run around in the savannah you are stressed up completely scanning uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the environment for danger scan hundred ways to scanning die. scanning for uh, people to things to hunt scanning for mating uh, possibilities but when you get home uh, to the camp at night at the fire you have to build the should we call it religious or uh, spiritual, the spiritual, cultural, yeah. uh, in the tribe you have to feel the meaning of the tribe, mm -hmm. feel the meaning of your life so you get rid of all the stress uh, and you use music to, to get into a, we we'll live and we'll live another breathe day. Breathe again, <laughs> breathe properly, yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the meaning of life, we're together, the, the tribe where we're together will we'll survive and, and all this so, social and, and, and spiritual um, things coming out of the music and, 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 and still does. Cool. Uh, yeah. So here we are at a digital health conference and you have taken all this kind of a knowledge and ideas and where does the bass go and you've extrapolated it into a device that's used for the uh, help in treatment of chronic pain. You find that uh, some time in your device uh, helps the person to receive better a chronic pain treatment? Uh, no. Uh, we designed a, a system that actually will cure uh, pain and, and uh, at least reduce uh, 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 the pain uh, because we found out that this base uh, is actually producing a lot of signals going to a specific part of the brain called the VPL of the thalamus. It's um, a component in the brain that also happens to be a relay system for every pain signal 
coming from the body to the brain. Amazing. So uh, it's really simple. Everybody is able to understand it. If you if you fill up uh, the body with this space um, uh, that we can produce in our system, it will simply block uh, uh, the signals from the pain system going through right. the mental Amazing. process. Amazing. Yeah. I spent about and 10 minutes in the chair yesterday. Can we yeah. go do another session right now? We can do it right away. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Dr. Peter Michael, Chris Krug, signing off from Vancouver, British Columbia at the Interface Digital Health Conference. I hope you check this out. Check out his device. And if you're here, come take a seat in it. It's a quite uh, transcendental experience. Over and out, Internet. Okay.